What's a boat doing in the middle of a desert? It's a question that has baffled archaeologists for decades. A groundbreaking discovery, solving one of ancient Egypt's greatest mysteries. In the heart of Egypt, far from the nearest shoreline, an astonishing discovery was made. Ancient ships buried beneath the sands of Abydos. These vessels weren't mere models or remnants. They were full-sized, seaworthy ships that predate the Great Pyramids by centuries. Why were these boats buried? What catastrophic event led to their entombment in the sands? Who built them? Why were they placed so deliberately in the desert? And what secrets do they hold about the seafaring capabilities of ancient civilizations? Join us as we uncover the mystery behind these forgotten fleets. The Discovery at Abydos In 1988, a fierce desert storm swept across one of Egypt's oldest archaeological sites near Abydos. As the sands shifted, they revealed something unexpected. Wooden beams protruding from the ground, hollowed out and weathered by time. For years, this strange find remained a mystery until an American archaeological team returned to the site in 2000. What they uncovered would change history. Buried beneath the desert were the remains of a massive fleet of 14 ancient boats, each about 70 feet long, lying side by side, perfectly parallel to one another. These weren't models or decorative objects. They were full-sized ships. The wood, though degraded and riddled with termite damage, was still preserved enough for scientists to extract samples. What they found shocked them. Radiocarbon dating revealed that these ships were nearly 5,000 years old, making them the oldest fleet ever discovered. Their age placed them at least 500 years before the construction of the Great Pyramids at Giza. But how did such massive ships end up buried deep inland, miles away from the Nile's current course? Initially, scholars believed that these vessels once floated on the banks of the mighty river. Yet further studies debunked that theory the Nile had never flowed close enough to this burial site. Even more curious, if these boats had been docked on a riverbank, their positioning would have been haphazard. Instead, they lay neatly aligned, as if intentionally arranged. Excavations revealed that each ship rested within its mud-brick vault, a chamber designed to house it perfectly. These enclosures were about a third the size of a tennis court, with mud-brick walls lined with over 120 boat drawings, carefully painted on whitewashed surfaces that had somehow survived the ages. Though local villagers and early explorers knew of the site's existence for over a century, it wasn't until the 21st century that the true significance of the Abydos boats was understood. Their deliberate placement, their scale, and their craftsmanship spoke of a civilization capable of remarkable engineering feats. These ships were not just buried, they were entombed in a manner strikingly similar to how pharaohs were buried with treasures for the afterlife. Significance of the Abydos Fleet The discovery of the Abydos Fleet wasn't just another archaeological find. It rewrote a crucial chapter in our understanding of ancient Egyptian engineering and shipbuilding. Prior to this, most evidence of Egyptian ships came from small wooden models found in tombs, like those discovered in King Tutankhamun's tomb, where 35 miniature boats offered insights into nautical life. But models can only tell so much. The ships at Abydos were the real deal, seaworthy vessels, capable of transporting dozens of rowers across water. These weren't primitive rafts or dugout canoes either. Unlike earlier boats made from hollowed-out tree trunks or bundled reeds, the Abydos fleet was crafted from planks lashed together, a shipbuilding technique that marked a significant technological leap. This method, known as shell-first construction, was rare at the time and suggests a far more advanced understanding of maritime craftsmanship than previously believed. But perhaps the most astonishing detail? The wood itself. There are no forests in Egypt's desert. The nearest source of quality timber, specifically cedar wood, was Lebanon, hundreds of miles away. Now first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. This means the builders of the Abydos fleet had not only the resources but also the logistical capability to import massive quantities of timber across great distances. Such an enterprise would have been reserved for the elite of society, likely the pharaoh himself. The arrangement of the ships, each resting in its brick-lined chamber, adds another layer of mystery. These vaults weren't simple pits. They were carefully designed enclosures, almost ceremonial. The walls were adorned with intricate boat drawings, 
reinforcing the significance of these vessels. Their placement, construction, and materials suggest they were never intended for regular use. Instead, they were purpose-built, likely symbolic and possibly ritualistic, a fleet designed not for earthly waters, but for a voyage beyond life. The Abydos fleet, therefore, wasn't just a collection of ancient ships. It was a monument to early Egyptian ambition, showcasing their technological prowess and spiritual beliefs. Symbolism and Purpose of the Boats To truly understand why these monumental ships were buried in the desert, we have to step into the spiritual world of ancient Egypt. In their belief system, life didn't end with death. It transformed. And to journey into the afterlife, one needed a vessel worthy of the gods. Central to this belief was Ra, the Egyptian sun god, who sailed across the sky during the day and navigated through the underworld at night aboard a solar boat. The pharaoh, seen as the earthly embodiment of Ra, was expected to follow the same cosmic journey after death. Thus, for the pharaoh to be reborn each morning, just like the sun, he too required boats for the afterlife. This is where the Abydos fleet takes on its deeper meaning. These ships weren't mere tools for earthly travel. They were vehicles of spiritual passage, crafted to accompany the pharaoh's soul on his eternal voyage. Their burial near Abydos, a sacred city associated with Osiris, the god of the afterlife strengthened this symbolism. The boat's orientation, perfectly aligned and meticulously arranged, echoed the order and harmony Egyptians believed governed both the cosmos and their society. Even Khufu's solar boat, discovered beside the Great Pyramid centuries later, followed this tradition, providing the pharaoh with transport for the next world. Yet despite their grandeur, scholars remain unsure whether the Abydos boats ever touched water. They may have been used in ceremonial processions or built purely for symbolic purposes. Either way, their construction demonstrates not only remarkable craftsmanship, but a deep spiritual commitment and an effort to ensure that Egypt's rulers could traverse the mysterious waters of eternity just as they once ruled the Nile. Other Technological Marvels of Ancient Egypt The Abydos fleet is just one of many jaw-dropping examples of ancient Egyptian ingenuity. Across the sands of Egypt, other technological feats continue to amaze modern scientists and historians alike. One of the most remarkable is the solar boat of Pharaoh Khufu, discovered in 1954 near the Great Pyramid of Giza. This vessel, unlike the Abydos fleet, was almost twice as long, stretching 143 feet, and was carefully disassembled and buried in a pit to accompany Khufu in the afterlife. The precision and craftsmanship of Khufu's boat mirror the sophistication seen at Abydos. Constructed with cedar wood planks tied together using rope, a method known as sewn plank construction, the boat's design was so advanced that when it was reconstructed, it floated perfectly. It demonstrated that ancient Egyptians possessed not only religious motivations for their ships, but also real seaworthy engineering skills. The wooden part uh, we are lifting today is, a very, is unique and different from others. But Egypt's engineering genius wasn't limited to shipbuilding. Venture south to Saqqara and you'll encounter the Serapium, a labyrinth of underground tunnels housing 24 massive granite sarcophagi, each weighing 70 to 100 tons. These weren't ordinary coffins. Carved from a single block of granite, their surfaces were polished to a mirror finish with precision so exact that even modern tools struggled to replicate it. How these giant boxes were transported through narrow tunnels and lowered into perfectly fitted niches remains a puzzle. The tunnels themselves were only slightly wider than the sarcophagi, leaving no room for hundreds of workers to maneuver. Some speculate the use of sand-filled chambers to lower the boxes, a technique requiring incredible skill and coordination. Adding to the mystery is the speculation that these sarcophagi weren't just for burying sacred bulls, as traditionally believed. Some theories suggest they might have been sealed energy chambers, utilizing the piezoelectric properties of granite under pressure. The notion is controversial but reflects the open questions surrounding ancient Egypt's technological prowess. Together, these marvels, whether ships buried in the desert, boats hidden near pyramids, or sarcophagi carved with uncanny precision, 
point to a civilization that blended spiritual belief with technological mastery, creating artifacts that continue to challenge modern understanding. Global Context Other Mysterious Ancient Ship Discoveries While the Abydos fleet offers an incredible glimpse into Egypt's early mastery of shipbuilding, it's far from the only example of advanced ancient maritime technology. Across the world, other civilizations built remarkable vessels, raising the question, did these cultures develop seafaring independently, or was there a transfer of knowledge across distant lands? Take, for example, the Viking longships of Scandinavia, sleek, fast, and designed to navigate both open seas and shallow rivers. These vessels appeared thousands of years after the Abydos fleet, yet their construction shows an advanced understanding of hydrodynamics and ship stability. The Vikings used overlapping planks, known as clinker-built construction, allowing flexibility and strength in rough waters. Further back in time, the Phoenicians, renowned traders of the ancient Mediterranean, mastered shipbuilding techniques that enabled them to sail beyond the Straits of Gibraltar possibly even reaching as far as the British Isles in West Africa. Their sturdy merchant ships were equipped with a central keel, improving stability during long voyages. In the Pacific, the Polynesians developed double-hulled canoes capable of traversing thousands of miles between islands. Using only the stars, ocean currents, and bird flight patterns, they populated vast stretches of the Pacific Ocean, long before European explorers dared to cross such distances. The Chinese treasure ships of the Ming Dynasty, built centuries later, dwarfed most vessels of their time. Some reached lengths of over 400 feet, carrying hundreds of sailors, soldiers, and diplomats on voyages across the Indian Ocean. These global examples raise intriguing possibilities. Was the Abydos fleet a unique innovation of early Egypt, or did it reflect a shared legacy of maritime knowledge that spanned continents? Some historians suggest cultural exchanges between ancient societies, while others argue for the parallel evolution of seafaring that developed independently wherever human curiosity met the challenge of water. In any case, the Abydos ships stand among the earliest known examples of advanced shipbuilding, proving that human ingenuity on the water has deep, interconnected roots. The Lost City of Aten As remarkable as the Abydos fleet is, Egypt continues to reveal secrets buried beneath its sands. In 2020, archaeologists made what many called the most important discovery since King Tutankhamun's tomb, the lost city of Aten. Nestled near the Valley of the Kings, Aten is believed to be over 3,000 years old, dating back to Egypt's most prosperous era during the reign of Amenhotep III. What sets Aten apart from other archaeological finds is its incredible state of preservation. Researchers unearthed complete neighborhoods, residential areas, bakeries, and administrative buildings, all frozen in time. Everyday items like pottery, tools, jewelry, and even remnants of meals were left as if the inhabitants had just stepped away. This wasn't a ceremonial or religious site. It was a bustling urban center, offering a rare glimpse into the daily lives of ancient Egyptians. The discovery of Aten provides valuable context for understanding the civilization that built monumental structures like the pyramids and the Abydos fleet. It demonstrates the organizational skill, resource management, and technological capabilities that supported such grand projects. Here was a city where craftsmen, administrators, and laborers worked together, contributing to Egypt's wealth and cultural achievements. Notably, Aten was uncovered just miles from Luxor, another seat of Egyptian power. Its proximity to royal burial sites suggests that this city played a key role in supporting the spiritual and political needs of the pharaohs, perhaps even facilitating monumental projects like the construction of royal tombs or ritual vessels. As research continues, Aten promises to unveil more about the social fabric of ancient Egypt, reminding us that behind every great monument and fleet, there were vibrant communities of people whose daily efforts made those wonders possible. Unanswered Questions The discovery of the Abydos fleet raises as many questions as it answers. These 5,000-year-old ships, meticulously crafted and ceremonially buried, are not merely relics of Egypt's past. They are a window into a civilization whose mastery of engineering, religion, and symbolism continues to astound us. But the central mystery remains. Who truly built them, and for what exact purpose? 
Were these ships ever meant to sail the waters of the Nile, or were they purely constructed for the Pharaoh's journey into the afterlife? Did the knowledge to build such advanced vessels emerge independently in Egypt, or was it part of a wider, interconnected world where ideas and technologies traveled across ancient seas? Similar questions echo across other ancient wonders, from the precision-carved sarcophagi at Saqqara to the massive monoliths at Baalbek. The feats of ancient civilizations hint at knowledge and techniques we are only beginning to understand. Did these cultures possess lost technologies or methods that have slipped through the cracks of history? Or were they simply the result of human ingenuity pushed to its limits, driven by necessity, belief, and ambition? Each discovery, whether a buried ship in the desert, a hidden city beneath the sands, or a forgotten tunnel beneath a pyramid, reminds us that history is far from complete. With each layer of sand removed, new puzzles emerge, some solved, many left for future generations. The Abydos fleet, standing silent beneath the Egyptian sun, is a testament to our ancestors' ability to dream beyond their time. Their ships, though stationary, continue to carry us on a journey not across rivers or seas, but deep into the mysteries of the past.